Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 97. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? And we are back. Yeah, it was actually a pretty nice break, and then it even got extended, so... <laughs> it's too early in the episode for me to say that, to, to tell you what you can do, but... Uh... <laughs> I did not enjoy the extension as much as Eric did. No, I, I don't think you did. So I'm still a bit down with the flu right now. Down with the sickness? Yeah, I'm down with the sickness. Oh. It is me, Mr. Hip Guy. <laughs> Everyone knows that I know all the references. Wow. But I'm probably going to sound a little weird and stuffy today, but we're just going to push on through. Today, we have something exciting. We are going to present to you the first in a series that we'll probably do throughout 10th edition. We're going to give you five meme lists that you should never run. I mean, you could. I just want it advised that you should not buy the things on these lists to play these lists. We are not showing you good lists today. We are showing you funny lists. We are showing you lists. They are lists that exist. So real quick, before we get into the episode proper, there is an emergency announcement of sorts. I gotta get this info out there. We failed. Bricky failed. <laughs> Bricky betrayed us. Uh, Bricky screwed up. <laughs> Bus. Bricky. Here you go. <laughs> So the poor hammer objective markers that we we're very proud of being able to sell finally through Orchid 8 and have a great time selling them and a ton of people bought them and that's awesome. Uh, no one measured those objective markers until recently. Yeah. If you put them next to a different objective marker, you may find out they're not the right size. <laughs> Due to a clerical error, a very large number of poor hammer objective markers, all of them that exist, <laughs> were printed at 7 inches and not the 7.5 inches that an objective marker should be. So, this is being corrected. Oops. I have spoken to Bricky this week. There will be new proper sized objective markers moving forward. The current ones have been taken down from the page. There's none in stock now, you'll see. From now on, any ones purchased will be of the correct size, but it's probably going to be two to three months until those exist. They've got to get printed and shipped and all that so that they can get shipped out from Orchid 8. So for anyone who did buy the wrong objective markers, do not fear. You will be receiving an email from Orchid 8 on whatever email is attached to your order. It may already be out there by the time this episode airs. It will give you the offer of you can either get a full refund or you can select to have the new objective markers sent to you free of charge when they show up. It's up to you if you just want to keep the wrong size ones for free or if you want the correct size ones you actually thought you were getting when you paid for them. Just try not to mix them together. That would be problematic. Uh, just give your opponents the smaller ones. <laughs> yeah, it was like, <laughs> we're going to choose who uh, is on which side. And uh... So Bricky's taking care of all of that. I just want to get it out there for everybody so that you know how to get it corrected for yourself. Check your email if you bought them. Sorry to everybody who did. Bricky is even more sorry. Well, yeah, I mean, he's covering the stuff so he's probably really sorry <laughs> so make sure to go make fun of him in a bricky video don't do it on adeptus ridiculous that's mean to the other hosts but go enjoy making fun of bricky's inability to measure he's not used to sizes over five inches wow real mature <laughs> it is me the mature guy i say all of the mature things <laughs> yeah absolutely so with all of that out of the way let's get into the episode proper now all right sounds good all right, it is time for the five meme lists that we're starting off the edition with. We decided to only pull from the codices that have gotten updates so far, and then we'll probably keep it rolling from here every couple months to another one of these that focuses on the new codices and maybe comes back to an old one. Right, one list for each of the codices that are out right now. All four of them. Yes, five lists. Yes, Space Marines are special and they always get extra. <laughs> Also, I just thought of two jokes for Space Marines, so I figured, why not? Also, five sells better as a number, so why not, why not? It's true. Four divides by two, and that's never good. What? <laughs> 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 
I guess that means that we should start with Space Marine since they're special. All right. So the first list I'm calling Not a Marine in Sight. All right. That's a good Space Marine list. So I was building my typical Iron Hands list, right? And I started thinking about how few visible Space Marines there are in my average Iron Hand list. That sounds right, actually. And then I was like, can I bring this to its logical conclusion and just never paint a Space Marine and put together a Space Marine army? It turns out that's really easy. I <laughs> limited myself to only one copy of each data sheet to show off like a bunch of random options. And then I still had a 3000 something point list because Space Marines have too many goddamn data sheets. I was going to say like just like going through like the list and being like just all the non Space Marines. You just click all the like Gladiator has three variants and Land Raider has two and like Land Raider has three. I was spoiled for choices with this list. It was very simple until I was like, oh, but I need a Space Marine to lead it because I need an HQ. And I was like, oh, Primarchs aren't Space Marines. I'll just play Ultramarines and pick Gilliman. Nailed it. <laughs> so the list is essentially just you have Rebooted Gilliman, and then we play like a Ballistus Dreadnought, a Brutalis Dreadnought, a Redemptor Dreadnought. Then we can play a Gladiator Lancer, a Gladiator Reaper, a Gladiator Valiant. Then we can play a Repulsor, a Repulsor Executioner, <laughs> a Stormhawk Interceptor. And then I had enough points left in a 2000 point list not to play like any of the other vehicles so I just threw a drop pod in there. The fact that you didn't put like I guess like an invader ATV would have failed. Yeah because you can see the space yeah. marines. Like I couldn't do there were several vehicles and stuff where you can just see marines. Right. A lot of the flyers even because they have the windows unless you painted over the window which I didn't want to get into that. I feel like that would have been okay but but I didn't have to stretch so why? Right. So this was why Wildly simple to actually put together once I actually tried it. The drop pod looks like I'm stretching here, but that's because I ran out of points. I didn't even touch a land raider here. That is <laughs> impressive. The fact that you don't have any land raider is like... I didn't even touch old marines. Like, I could have gone whole rhino chassis, all of those. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There is a lot you could pick. It was just entertaining because I'm like, as long as you don't put like the version where you put the little half a guy up top holding the gun, you put the closed hatch on all of the vehicles. There you go. The teapot hat. Yeah. This list is hilarious to think about of like, I walk up to the table and go, oh boy, I play space marines. Oh wow. That must be boring. No, I've never painted one. <laughs> And you just have all of these vehicles and dreadnoughts and... At the same time, like... <laughs> It's very Iron Hands, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I could have just posted a random Iron Hands list where you're playing, like, eight dreads and some gladiator variants, and, like, you randomly will have one or two marines in that that are visible, that are probably tech marines. And that's, like, a totally normal Iron Hands list. At a certain point, this feels more like a shopping list of, like, <laughs> Gilliman's shopping list of, like, these are the, uh... Good luck finding gladiators on that shopping list. <laughs> Out of stock for like eight straight months. I know. <laughs> so obviously these are meme lists, but I, I mean, this is like a playable list, right? Honestly, if you were going to build one of these lists and take it to a game. Like the drop pod is whatever, but... <laughs> I would alter this list slightly, but I could take this to a game and like hold back points with some gladiators, move some dreadnoughts up board, take the mid board with dreadnoughts and like you just sit back with the repulsors and wonder why they cost so many points. But And like just like forget about the Stormhawk. And forget it off board and let it explode. The Stormhawk doesn't need to exist. It looks cool <laughs> on the side. Yay. I just wanted to include an airplane and not feel like it doesn't belong. You just shouldn't <laughs> play airplanes in 40k right now no you shouldn't <laughs> but it, it looks cool and that's what matters but like yeah there's enough models that it's not like the uh knights lists where you're like you can hold one point because that's all you have of models <laughs> yeah, like, even if a couple of your things get blown up, you're probably still able to hold four or five points with this. Yeah, and, like, Gilliman's gonna slap. Yeah, Gilliman's not what he used to be, but he's still very good. Well, I should rephrase that. Gilliman alone is not the greatest. Keeping him with some dreadnoughts should be fine, though. Yeah. Yeah, I, drop pod's kind of a joke here, but I guess just drop it somewhere for fun. Make your opponent blow it up to get it out of the way. This list isn't gonna win a tournament, but I could probably win a casual game. Yeah. And uh, definitely have some fun with it. <laughs> 
Yeah, I think like other than I don't have a drop pod, we've got multiple in the playgroup and I can't find any gladiators anyway, even if I wanted them. Not that I do, Baka. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> I could probably just make the uh, producer army play this. Yeah, I mean... Not yet, because I have to actually finish building it and painting it, but that project we've discussed it in the past will probably come up again at some point later this year when I show off a progress report on it. But, like, I'm printing up Alfarius, so that can be my Gilliman. I definitely have the dreads. And I think that that, like, if somebody wanted, don't, like, don't go out of your way to make this list. But if they wanted to, like, you don't have to have all three, like, variant exact load out type things like of all the lists we're discussing today this one and the necron list are the ones that are most likely for someone to just say i own this list i could just play this yeah like this is a pretty normal looking collection Uh, it's a little gladiator heavy and you bought two repulsors (laughs) (laughs) but it's not this one of like oh wow i don't have any of this stuff or anything that would be similar that you could swap in, so... Yeah. Uh, let's talk about a different list you shouldn't build for incredibly <laughs> obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tyranids. You know the game The Floor is Lava. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to play a game called The Floor is Bugs. Ah, The Floor is Bugs. Yeah. We're on a bad acid trip. That'd be terrifying. (laughs) It would be terrifying. (laughs) Truly horrifying. All right. Let's slow roll this. Yeah. Uh, So we start off. Our warlord is just a winged Tyranid Prime. That's just a solidly good warlord. I like it. I gave him a random warlord trait, Adrenalized Onslaught, because why not? Then I uh, gave him 20 gargoyles to lead. Hey, there we go. That's fine. That's a bit weird but uh it could have been warriors but let's go with gargoyles 20 of them all right then we want 20 hormigons oh yeah obviously and then we want 20 hormigons yeah 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 Yeah, definitely double it up and then we want 20 hormigons all right uh yeah that's fair and then we want 20 hormigons are yeah and then we want 20 hormigons is there like a repeat lag going on here and then we want 20 more hormigons Wow. And that's the legal maximum, so we can't play anymore, but I want (laughs) to play some more Gaunts. So let's run 20 Termagaunts, just for good measure. (laughs) Right, because, you know, the first 100 wasn't enough. 120, thank you. Yeah. So then let's do 20 more Termagaunts. Of course. And another one. Yep. Another one. Okay. Another one. Uh, Yep. Another one. I think that's all we've got. I think we're literally at the max that we can do on that. Let's get out of battle line. Let's back up on the meme here. Let's see some of the uh, rest of the army of Tyranids. We've got the winged tyrant. So like maybe some cool stuff like that. How about 22 (laughs) Neuragons? All right, then. (laughs) We haven't stopped yet, huh? May as well just double that one up as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's double that up. 22 more. Yeah, of course. You know. All right. We've got like exactly 90 points left. So we have to just 22 more. (laughs) Just 22 more. So for a grand total here, we've got a winged Tyranid Prime, 20 Gargoyles, 120 Hormagons, 120 Termagons, and then a casual 66 Neurogons. Nice. It's just 327 models. (laughs) It's only going to take you three and a half hours to set up your initial deployment. I love it. (laughs) It's absolutely ridiculous in the best way that I would never want to play against. I would never want to play this. But to see a picture of it set up, I'd be like, yep, that's the fucking swarm, man. Let's go. I think you would have trouble setting this up on the board in your deployment zone. This is 327 total models that you have to set up and then move every movement phase. Yeah, I it would be a nightmare. <laughs> God damn, is that just hilarious? 327 models. Oh. I love how it's like, at first you're like, okay, it's an endless swarm spam list. You start off with a winged Tyranid Prime. You're in the right sub-faction for it. Gargoyles. Okay, that's what the Prime will lead. And then you just see the list cascading down from there. And you're like, oh God. It just keeps going. (laughs) And then you're like, you know what? We've maxed out battle line. So obviously we're going to get to the rest. And it's like, nah. (laughs) And the best part is, like, Neurogons are trash. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god, they're so bad. You get 22 of them for 90 points. I mean, you gotta have somebody sit on the back points, right? I mean, I'd probably put my Termagants further back and just have the Neurogons absorb some damage. So, on, on that, there's actually a lot of wounds in this list, <laughs> right? Not only a lot of wounds, there's a lot of bodies. You can't just blast this with one big blast. Yeah. You have to land 327 shots over the game to clear this list. That's honestly not trivial. <laughs> From a Grey Knight standpoint, you've got Storm Bolters. They can put out some decent fire, but you don't have that many bodies. I don't think I could kill it in five turns. <laughs> I think there's a couple armies that would have trouble. Like, Custodes, they're really good quality, but they do not have the quantity. No. You'd max out killing for each turn, and then there'd still be a hundred left. And, like, Space Marines, if you've got, like, five jump pack intercessors, right? Sure, they're swinging 20-ish, 20-something times, right? Depending how we play them. Yeah. But you're going to miss some amount of those, and a couple will fail to wound, even though, like, you're going to wound a lot. Yeah, but, like, missing 5% of them is still a noticeable lack of damage going through. <laughs> then you got saves, which technically, I don't know in this sub-faction, this is going a little too deep in the weeds, how much we could protect these, but like, let's just assume they fail every save. This is still like, you need probably 10 plus units of marines for multiple turns yeah. to start chewing through this a considerable percentage. And that's like, that's completely ignoring the fact that there's a winged Tyranid Prime going around. He's not that killy. He won't even kill a captain in one turn. The Winged Tyranid Prime Eric is the it's a Tyranid warrior. I thought he got a buff melee profile. He does, but like it's like 6 minus 2 2. Oh, okay. I think he's got some decent attacks, but they're not crazy. Okay, okay. Still, like it's solid, but it's not what I was thinking. No. You were thinking more like what happens when you get a winged Hive Tyrant. Oh yeah, Hive Tyrant would have fucked people up. But uh, yeah, I mean this list is dumb and like seriously don't play it because this list is one where like i joked that like space marines you might have that there are long time tyranid players where the hardest part of this is going to be do you have 66 neurogons yeah like a lot of people own a lot of termagons and hormagons i still wouldn't recommend you play this yeah i mean especially if you had like the old ones and then you got the new ones kind of thing i mean maybe you play it once just to see what happens i i don't think you should really I mean, play it once, play one movement phase and just clock it. There you go. Just clock the movement phase and tell us. Yeah. And make sure that like you and your opponent have already decided the uh, mission and all of that stuff so that <laughs> you can set up your army deployment and they'll just like figure it out as they go because you're not going to have much decision to be made by your army deployment. It's literally just going to be fit it in the deployment zone. <laughs> you probably want to put your hormigons in the front. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, <laughs> not much of a shock so like you can set up as as expected and then after that your opponent can show up and then sit there and wait for the rest of the night as you move and then you concede <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget to take a picture or two because it's fucking cool looking <laughs> All right, so now that we've discussed the horde that can take down horde mode, let's move on to our next one. This one is interesting because I didn't make it. <laughs> I made a Necron one, so I'll just tell you what mine was. It's one that would be fun, but competitive made it lame. Yes, I was like, it had the ability and interest that could have been there, but... It was Oops All Catans, but I ran Silent King because he's got a Catan on his ship and it was just him and a bunch of Catans, right? Yeah. It's a funny list, except the problem is playing six Catans is very good right now, so it, it's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, it's a meme, but it's so good that it's like, this looks too close to an actual competitive list, like you remove one of these models and put in some like core competitive models to like play the game around and then just unleash these katans anyway and you've got a decent list already so i didn't want to do that it was boring i'm not a big fan of the current new necron codex it's not the worst ad mech but it's not the best and i just generally was in a slump on necrons so eric i let you just Give it a shot, and this is what you gave us, huh? Yeah, you being in a slump for Necrons, interesting, because I've been in a slump with Grey Knights, and uh, <laughs> I decided to just make better Grey Knights with Necrons. All right, walk us through it, because I don't see it. <laughs> 
So the Hypercrypt Legion basically lets you do the whole teleport around shenanigan things that Grey Knight's trying to do. We do it worse, though. So they've got hyperphasing. At the end of your opponent's turn, you can select a number of Necron units from your army, excluding units that are within engagement range of one or more enemy units. The maximum number of units you can select depends on the battle size. So Incursion 2, Strike Force 3, Onslaught 4. Once you made your selection, remove those units from the battlefield and place them into strategic reserves. So, yeah, it is worse. But, like... It's- it's what you've got, but we don't have default deep strike on everything. So when we put them back, they're going into strategic reserves so they can only come in from the sides of the board. It's not the same. It's not the same, but it plays a similar idea of just like board control through popping around. And one thing that Necron does have is anti-tank. And like, oh, but Grey Knights has psychic. Well, I present to you death marks, which have cast gun, which is basically the same. So I don't agree. The death mark data sheet is not fantastic. I mean, it's basically just like smites. What is the profile? Strength five, AP minus two, damage two. One shot each. Yeah. 36 inch range. Okay. So you're playing 30 of them. So you get 30 shots. With 30 shots of precision, it could be funny to use against a character reliant list. Yeah. I mean, it'll do fine. Wounds, Marines on threes. Hits on twos if they don't move. Minus two AP is decent. You basically take most characters to their four up in Vuln, and then you're doing two damage a pop, so three to actually kill something. You could probably remove two-ish characters per turn, depending on luck, from your average army. That's kind of the expectation on that for me. You should be able to get one without problem. Look, I'm not a Deathmark fan. I have played them on multiple occasions and have always felt disappointed. <laughs> There was like a, a moment at the end of ninth edition where death marks were just better than playing immortals, but that had more to do with the state of Necrons than anything else. All right. Okay, so keep us going. Keep us going. So because I like the ability to just fuck with boards and deployments and all that stuff, I figured let's have some fun with uh, infiltrators. And since like the whole idea is to be bouncing around the board, well, let's make it start from deployment. So just grabbed two things things of 10 flayed ones and six canaptic acanthrites. Sure. I've never pronounced this word out loud before. Yeah, I don't remember hearing it. They're a Forge World model. So that's why you've never heard it is I don't own any. Yeah. I've never even bothered printing them since they're essentially a melt gun on a body. Yes, they are a melt gun on a body, but they have infiltrate. Oh, do they now? Okay. It's a little cute. Don't really want my Annie tank standing in the middle of the board at game start with his dick out, but it's cute. Yeah. Except once we've done all this deployment shenanigans, I brought one katan, and that's the katana of the deceiver. So we're gonna <laughs> redeploy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> Nothing is as it looks like it. <laughs> Everything is different. The board's changing all the time, man. All right. I'm more in now. This is a little bit funny. And uh, I mean, there was one of those like, all right, I still need anti-tank because that's the one thing that pisses me off right now about actually like other than the fact that like psychic and whatever, but like can't kill tanks. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to grab two things of Locust Heavy Destroyers. That'll do the job. That doesn't even seem meme, but I guess the meme is Grey Knights here. So yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is Grey Knights done better. Why do you have a Knight Scythe? It was one of those that I'm not sure what to do at the end there. And I was like, there's some cute things you can probably do with a Knight Scythe that seems thematic to the whole fucking with the board. It can undo other, like, it's basically like a shitty version of hyperphasing. I guess it just gets into the, this is to make fun of Grey Knights thing of it's also a drop pot ability. And you are really playing it heavy on the movement parts of this. Oh, yeah, this is very much a movement board shuffle list. That's the meme. <laughs> I'm not expecting this list to be good. I'm not suggesting anybody play it. Very much the opposite. This was a personal list for you. This was a very personal list of look at how badly they've done my Grey Knights. That's my take on Necron's meme list. I think it's far more interesting than Oops All Catan. Knowing your goal was to bash on your Grey Knights, I get it. <laughs> 
I am shocked you're playing Hypercrypt and you didn't bring a single monolith when like half the Hypercrypt rules rely on a monolith. I mean, one, I don't like the monolith. It's just train, but it's expensive. And like, yeah, a lot of the strats do matter, but like two of them are very specific. You're probably not going to be using them. One of them's two CP. So like you kind of have to have a CP generator to realistically do it. I don't think you need a CP gen. In this detachment, there's nothing else you're going to be spending your CP on other than like a random reroll. All right, we can move on. I want to save Admech for last because I, I'm proud of my punchline. So let's do Space Marines again to get the second Space Marine list out of the way. <laughs> let's do Space Marines again. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, Tyranids version of Space Marines because that's obviously the other thing instead of no Marines in sight, all Marines in sight, right? It's related. <laughs> So you've heard of Nuketown from Call of Duty, right? I have. Wasted quite a bit of my life in Nuketown. Overrated map, by the way. Fuck you. So instead of Nuketown, Space Marines can live in Boomer Town. Wow. It's like Nuketown, but really depressing. Because <laughs> Nuketown is definitely not depressing at all. <laughs> it's got a bus. <laughs> and it ends in fireworks. <laughs> All right, Boomer Town. So Boomer Town. This was my other thought while I was playing around with the Ultramarines. I was like, you know, I really hate old Marines. <laughs> I absolutely love the fact that, like, every time you're thinking about Space Marines, that thought has to cross your mind. Like, there's no way it doesn't. You're just like, Space Marines, fuck old Marines. All right, what were we doing again? What? Well, no, it, it was more <laughs> while I was putting together the not a Marine in sight, I was removing the old Marine units since I could do it with basically all Primaris, with all new models, right? Yeah. So I got rid of all the Rhino chassis and all that stuff. So I ended up cutting so much, I'm like, this could be its own list. And I was like, what's left that's still in the old ugly scale? It isn't Grey Knight. It's actually a space marine. <laughs> Wow. Okay, yeah. And I was like, there's got to be enough to make an army. There was definitely enough to make an army, <laughs> which is more disheartening to think about this fact that with what I'm about to list off, we still have so many more Space Marine releases in the Primaris scale they're going to do. So let me introduce you to the residents of Boomer Town. First up, we've got Captain Sicarius with his sweet old resin model. Sure, in modern lore, he's crossed the Rubicon Primaris and he's got a cool new drip, but uh, his model is still from 19 Dickety 2 and made out of fine cast. Yeah. I then grabbed a chaplain with jump pack, which is somehow still a unit, even though I don't think this model has been made in 10 years. I thought they got rid of that one. It's still legal and not listed as a Legends unit when I was playing with this <laughs> on New Recruit, and my only copy of this codex is at my brother's house, and I don't want to go over there just to check. No, I mean, that's fine. I just, I thought they got rid of that one. Snuck through, apparently. Next time. They'll get them next time. And uh, in our huge list of Terminators, we somehow didn't update the Ancient and Terminator <laughs> armor. That's still the old one. Which, to be fair, very thematic name. I, I guess, but they use Ancient in the British way where it just means flag. What? Ancient is the guy who holds the flag. That's actually a title in an army. I just broke your mind, didn't I, as you realized all the models that are Ancients are all holding flags. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were holding a flag because they were so old that, like, they're not actually fighting. No, it's literally guy who holds the flag. There's no way this is actually real. <laughs> Things you learn from playing this stupid game. Son of a bitch. <laughs> it's a standard flagger ensign. There you go. Fucker. God damn it, I hate the fact that I know that now. <laughs> and now you'll randomly bring it up and look like a dumbass in front of everybody else. <laughs> yeah, it's very I possible. just did it on air in front of our entire audience. So, that's who I put in for characters. Captain Sicarius is going to hang out with 10 Tactical Marines. I brought another 10 Tactical Marines just because I wanted this to actually look like a list. This is, like, as far as meme lists go, this is a meme because it's old Marines, but, like, it's a list. It's a diverse list with, like, all the things that you kind of need an actual list to do. And then our chaplain's going to hang out with five Vanguard vets with jump packs who somehow still have a data sheet. Yeah. Our Ancient and Terminator armor is going to hang out with the Terminator Assault Squad. <laughs> 
which is the melee terminators, not the ones that we just updated with the guns. These ones are like the guys who punch. Well, chop. Okay, fair enough. And then uh, I just brought five devastators. You can put them with whatever you want. (laughs) And then (laughs) I brought... Three Centurions who are the Assault loadout, and three Centurions who are the Devastator Squad loadout. To remind you, Centurions exist. Sure, okay. I mean, aren't they, like, actually pretty decent? I don't know how they are rules-wise. I don't care. I just know they were, like, one of the last additions in the old Marines before they just Primarist everything. They're essentially a Terminator for Terminators. Right. I brought an old Dread, because why not? (laughs) We have a Land Raider, because we're booming. I mean, if you didn't have a Land Raider, this would have been a failure of a list. And we can put our Terminators in it. And then I've got a Predator Destructor, a Razorback that we can put our Devastators in, and a Rhino that we can just toss Tacticals and Sicarius in or something. Classic. It looks like a list. It plays like a list. You're just 65 years old and you regret your life. I mean, this is very much a list of you stopped playing a decade ago and you're back. This is what you got. This could also be seen as a checklist for GW of things you forgot to remove. (laughs) Please delete these next edition. Thank you. (laughs) Not the rhino. (laughs) (laughs) Then it will truly be free. All right. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's a fine list. It's got a good spread of things that it needs to do, like whatever. I guess we can just move on to the ad mech list because I have no idea what you're going to pull on this one. All right. I have not shown this list to Eric. I'm going to have him walk us through it. Oh, no. So technically this list is like 30 points short just because you can put whatever enhancement you want on your warlord. It's not the point of this list. Okay. The sub faction, also not the point of this list. I didn't even bother putting it in. Really? You can ignore everything outside of this list. Okay, then. So while we go through this list, first up, we've got a marshal, which is a guy holding a stick and a little pistol. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the fucking cheap, doesn't even really exist in points. You can't even attach him to anything in this list. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so he's just here. That's great. That like, so it's obviously not a Skatari list. Well, then we've got a bunch of Skatari. <laughs> the rest of the list is all Skatari, technically. So I present you 15 Sky Stalkers, which are the guys with the little wings who have the guns. And then they've got like a Taser Goad. And... Yeah, okay. The Pterodactyl ones. Yeah. Then the Sterilizers, which is the other build where it's the same thing, but it has a flamethrower and its little claws that it grabs you with, right? Yeah, that one's actually pretty annoying. Or was. So you got a bunch of them flying around. Yeah, because they both of those have Deep Strike, right? They both have Deep Strike. Then we've got 18 Cerebus Raiders and 18 Cerebus Sulfur Hounds, which are the guys who ride the dogs. Okay. So we got a bunch of dudes riding their dogs. Very Space wolves <laughs> But they're mechanical, so the furries are disappointed. That's why they play Space Wolves instead. Sure, sure. And then we've got nine Iron Striders, uh, the the Balistari. So we've got some Chicken Walkers. I love Chicken Walkers. And then we've got nine Dragoons, which I threw Gisales on there because memes. Which is more chickens. Yeah, which one's the Gisales? It's the stupid, terrible sniper rifle. It's why they <laughs> split it into two data sheets, so that you would ever pick this. Because they could not make it pickable. It's so bad. All right, then. They made a war gear so bad they had to split a data sheet. Yeah. So this list is 1970 points of a guy with a pistol, a bunch of birds, and dogs. Would you like to guess at the theme of this list, Eric? Duck Hunter? You would be incorrect. That was what I was trying to get you to think of, though. So yes, Duck Hunter was the disguise. Do you want to know what the theme of this list really was? I don't know. What 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 do we got? A marshal, which is 35 points, is 35 US dollars. Oh, no. <laughs> Sky stalkers and sterilizers, which are 65 points, no matter how you build them, are 60 US dollars. Cerebus raiders and sulfur hounds. Do those only come in like threes? Are 60 US dollars, but you only get three. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Eric has figured it out because <laughs> he can do some quick math. Yeah, like the second that you're like, 
35 dollars. i was like okay yeah 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 the sky stalkers that's, that's about right wait a second there's no way it's a hundred oh <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> it's two kits the iron striders and dragoons are all the same kit which is 60 us dollars for one <laughs> this 1970 point list when you sum it all up is 2195 us dollars at msrp if you want to play duck hunt you have to pay 2195 us dollars that's fucked up <laughs> for a 2000 point list god damn dude <laughs> <laughs> and like the worst part is like not even thinking money wise i was like you know what this could be like a fun little stupid list right like you're playing <laughs> yeah. a bunch of chickens there, there's nothing horrendously wrong with this list other than i picked the marshal instead of like literally anything else yeah the marshal's definitely the <laughs> but it was for the duck hunt joke and my brother tried to improve on this and be like why don't you use the new sniper boy to like really make him think of duck hunt except he has a stupid new rule on him that says he can't be your fucking warlord so i couldn't put him in alone really huh which was super annoying because it was a great idea he was the first one in the list and then <laughs> i had to replace him and i had to figure out why i couldn't click a warlord button so i had to go look it up in the codex and be pissed off and then i had to explain to my brother why his great idea didn't work yeah one of those like oh i found a bug in the uh, list builder <laughs> oh Wait man a how many times is someone gonna oh <laughs> So, yeah, I didn't even, like, go out of my way to min-max this, by the way. I just knew in the back of my head that this would be very expensive. And then it was over 2000 US dollars, and I was like, I'm not even going to try to min-max this. But there you go. Over $2,000 to play a 2,000-point game. Warhammer 40k. This is what Games Workshop thinks of their ideal customer. I mean, one of the biggest problems are the chickens. I can replace them, and it doesn't change that much. No, but I mean, like, just the fact that it's... You only get one in that kit. And it's a 50-point model. If it was like a 120-point tank. Yeah. Because it's on a pretty big base. Like you've seen when our AdMech buddy lines up three of those next to each other, that's a pretty decent footprint. Yeah. But they're like 45 points, whatever it is for the bad one. And then 50 points for the anti-tank one. 60 points if you want the taser one. Like, yeah. no matter which way you put it, the most expensive one is one point per dollar. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> but, like, looking <laughs> elsewhere, right? Skatari. You want to play Skatari Vanguards? They're $60 for 80 points. Yeah. Electro Priests are $60 for 60 points. So, honestly, when you hid the ad mech list from me, I was entirely expecting another Tyranids joke where you're just like, here's the most fucking models you can have in ad mech. There was one where it was going to be a whole bunch of models that don't get their army rule. Yeah. That one was like, technically you could sub-faction this to not make it stupid, blah, blah. But like, this was this was just, as I was playing around, I realized how expensive it was. And I was like, no, this is the episode this week. And this was the first one I made. And then we made the rest of these lists. So you're going to call it uh, like modern deck or something like that, right? Oh, I was just thinking of of like retro duck hunt collector i don't know what else like john because it really was john <laughs> <laughs> so i was doing this right and you could do this with basically most ad mech units like just let me real quick run us through here yeah the dune rider their transport is 80 points the kit is barely under that in msrp i can't go tell you because the warhammer site is currently on anti-bot because of their stupid launch of old world yeah, I was just looking that same thing up. I mean, like, one of the things is, like, aren't the Castellan robots, like, one of the best? <laughs> yeah, so that's basically how you get out of it. You just play a whole bunch of Breachers and Castellan robots. And that's essentially the only affordable way to play AdMech. Which I think they're cool, so that's the way I would want to play them. And I guess you play, like, Call with them, and Dominus, and a Manipulus isn't the worst ratio, but it's still bad. And then, like, you still have to have a certain amount of rangers or vanguard like uh, you probably just play the scorpius disintegrator instead of the dune rider because it's like 180 points okay you just build it the other way yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it is like kind of doable, but I see what you're saying of like when you're making a list of AdMac, it can easily devolve into, oh, if I just keep doing this thing, it's going to be expensive and hilarious for the amount of points. You have to go out of your way to make it not nowadays. Yeah. It's kind of the, the hidden point of this episode. AdMac is not okay anymore. It is past the point where it is okay to not have an uproar over this. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, because a lot of the problems before the Codex were like, okay, but they can fix the point cost with army rules and change the, the actual rules to be better. And then they don't, you know, like the, the cost per point equalizes to an acceptable value, essentially. Right, but we've got the prices on these kits, like it's an elite army. Yeah. But then we turn it into Imperial Guard 2.0. Like, Gene Sealer Cults is a bad army to collect if you don't count the current combat patrol right yeah you could basically do this with gene sealer cults but the combat patrol is so good i recommend owning at least three copies of it possibly four and that's not a joke because it basically buys you the army for the rate you could buy any other army and like then you just fill out the last couple things that's missing if that combat patrol goes and they don't replace it with something similar they're gonna be another problem again <laughs> right and that's why it's such an important thing of like this needs to get brought up with admac before gene sealer cults ends up the exact same way and they are screwed this is not an okay amount of money for any army to be costing to begin with, but then to also have no discount box to solve this issue. Right. Like, their discount box is horrendous. Yeah. We did that whole episode, but like, this is showing you how bad it is. You are talking about an army that is essentially $2,000 to play a game of 40k with nowadays. This came up in the competitive Reddit recently when someone was like, I haven't seen AdMech at all recently. Like, it just got a codex. Why have I seen none of it? And people were like, well, the codex is pretty bad. And they're right. But another part of it is just not many people can afford to play AdMech. Yeah. If you didn't already own it, and even if you did already own it, you may not have enough to play anymore. That's the biggest problem for me at least is like you could have gotten in at ninth with a bunch of stuff and been like yeah that was a fun complicated army you could have been doing that but like that's like 1700 points now it might not be 1500 now yeah maybe and like it sucks because like i said like before you brought up before you basically landed the punchline of skatari marshall is 35 points but 35 dollars i was like yeah this seems like it could be a fun like it's dumb it's a nice meme like lots of chickens that's why i was laughing when you were like oh they've all got deep strike i'm like i don't know i didn't even check and then as i was like thinking about it i'm like this would be kind of neat to oh wait we could never play this we have an admec player i'm just imagining the laughter if i ask him <laughs> if he's got 18 dragoon slash balistari ready to play <laughs> He was pissed as hell when he bought his fifth because the things are like 60 bucks a piece and are less than that in points. Yep. And he did that in ninth and it was like one of the more expensive purchases he put into AdMech. And it's like, he can't even play like a full nine of these things, let alone 18 of them to play this list because they don't come in threes for $60. They come in one. Yeah. And then we get into like the dogs, unless you were like super into like end of eighth, beginning of ninth, pre-codex AdMech dog spam stuff. You probably probably don't have more than 12 dogs total however you have them built it was like 12 is probably a number that could be happening kind of thing like yeah but this list runs 18 of both which like i said like it could be fun it really could be yeah sure if they were sold in sixes for 60 dollars, it might not be the worst that would be a normal army's price and even then it'd still be on the higher end i and like nobody should have this many of these things no and again it could have <laughs> been that way if they were given out differently. Yeah. The problem is the combo. The kits look like an elite army's kits. Like you look at their combo box, you look at, they get one of this unit, three of this unit. Like that's how they get things. But then if you want to fill out 2000 points, you're playing three of those ones. You're playing six of those threes just to make a single unit. Yeah. It's just wrong the whole way through. And this is without getting into like, yes, I know power wise aside, everything about that codex is a disaster. I'm probably not the person to be doing that rant. I don't play AdMech and have that close of a relationship with it, but I understand the general disgust that AdMech players have with everything to do with the sub-factions and that codex and everything else. Didn't help that they was like, the white at the end of the tunnel is you're getting your codex. Yeah. So, uh, there we go. My $2,000 joke. Fuck you. <laughs>
I told you there was a reason it was worth being last, because I can't top that. None of these other memes beat the meme of Games Workshop's pricing. I mean, you're not wrong. All right, that's enough of going through these lists, though. If you have ideas for these armies for great meme lists that you want to share, please put them down in the comments on YouTube. It'd be great to read those. Maybe we'll cover them again one day. If you've got ideas for, like, upcoming armies where you're like, hey, we only have an index right now, but here's a fantastic funny list you can play. I'd love to read that. Maybe we'll use it on the show if it still survives the codex. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that, like, it's always interesting to see if the, like, unique lists make it through a codex, so. Yeah, like, there was the ad mech, your whole army blows up at the beginning of the game in the index. That was funny. (laughs) Wow. It's a funny joke. It is. It is. But I found this more depressing and funny post-Codex, so I think the Codex wins over the index here. Yeah. But yeah, definitely share your lists, because it could be interesting to look into them and see how they do. All right, but that's enough of us this week. Let's get out of here. We've got a lot of people to thank. It's wonderful to have this many names to read. Yeah, definitely. Especially uh, sticking through our break. (laughs) Yeah, again, patrons in the audience, Borelio, our wonderful editor, who is here listening to us right now. He does a bang-up job, and while I was too sick to talk, he went out of his way to record a bunch of extra bonus content that you can see in your Patreon feed, should you so choose to uh, watch that now that we're back. But for now, let us thank 99.9s, Adrian Frank, Alex Fuja, All Nighter, Andreas, Evan Seg, Cameron R. Christopher Gargugliano. Craig Judge. Daniel Frische. Dominic Colosio. Edward Lawrence. Ethan Gerard. Finn Smales. Grundle Bundle. Gun Game 4453. Gyarados. Hyperion TV. Ian. Iron Father. Jacob Gibson. Jake Vacanio. Jared DePerna. Jaden. Jeff Stumpo. Joel. Jonathan. Kiwi Fruitbird. Louis Castaldo. Michael Melcher. Morfield 55. Mr. Game. Nikki. What? <laughs> 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 that's not that's not the letter I expected out of the second one. Uh okay. Jarlin. Owl B Bark. Phantom Angel 1245. Proteus 7331. Rookie XP. Samuel Summerfield. Severed Stage. Squareson. The Marine Who Plays Tao. Trine. Warlock JPG. Weebay. <laughs> And Yasser Zazo. And we also have to thank our producers, Brandon Jenke. Demolition Man. Dr. Lace. Young Guy C. Michael Sullivan. Robert Tolano. And Rock. Thank you all so very much. Thank you for supporting the show. All right, that does it for us this week. Thank you all for listening.